Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be looking at addition polymerization. Now addition polymerization is a special kind of addition reaction which makes polymers. Polymers are types of plastics and this is quite relevant for both level 2 organic chemistry where you will come across this extensively and also to a lesser extent in level 1 carbon chemistry which may be also quite useful for some of you. So in my last couple of videos I've talked about addition reactions of alkenes and addition reactions are where your double bond in your alkene breaks and, the, and something else is added to the molecule. With an addition reaction the something else that is added to the molecule is another copy of the molecule. So you're taking the same molecule and you're kind of duplicating it and adding it on and on and on and on. To do this we usually need a catalyst which is nickel or platinum and we usually need high temperatures, sometimes also high pressures depending on which monomer we're working with. So this is a really quite important reaction. Now there's a few key terms that we use. Monomer is the term we use to describe the original alkene which makes up our polymer. So that is the starting material. The polymer is the long chain which is not just the three or four that you're going to draw in your exam question. Okay, A polymer usually consists of between tens of thousands and millions of monomer units joined together. And the repeating unit is basically like the monomer but with the double bond broken down to a single bond. And I'll show you what those mean in a moment. So let me show you some examples. So here we have our simplest possible monomer that we can draw. In terms of an alkene, this is ethene. Two carbons, four hydrogens, nothing more to look at. So there's nothing much to consider there. But ethene can be polymerized. And to draw a section of the polymer, the best thing I suggest is you start with that basic construction. We have two carbons connected together. Each carbon has two hydrogens on it. All I've done at this stage is taken that double bond and turned it into a single bond. And I'm going to draw several of them side by side. This bit that I'm drawing the two carbons, two hydrogens, single bond, is the repeating unit. Most exam questions that you come across will ask you to draw three repeating units of your polymer. So when your exam question asks you to draw three repeating units of your polymer, you start off by drawing it exactly the way I've done it. You've got three bits. And all you're going to do is connect it together. Okay, so now we have a polymer consisting of three repeating units. So let's have a look at a few terms. This bit, this thing here, is our monomer. A monomer. It is the alkene that we started with. This thing here is our polymer but only three repeating units okay and this one if ethene is our monomer then our polymer is polyethene and finally this bit here is our repeating unit Okay, and that is important to recognize. So depending on your exam question, you may be asked to draw three repeating units of a polymer made from a monomer. You may be asked to identify the repeating unit, or you may be given a section of polymer and asked to figure out the monomer for it. If that was the case, you would start off by isolating a repeating unit, that's any bit that has two carbons connected to each other. 
you just draw that bit exactly as it stands and then put a double bond back between it okay so that's how you would go about doing that now this doesn't matter how complicated your monomer is and they can be quite complicated now it does not matter how complicated your molecule is okay it could be the most complicated thing you've ever seen you might be looking at it and going what the flip is that but you're going to deal with it exactly the same way so imagine you've been given this molecule in front of you as an exam question and you've been asked to draw a polymer consisting of three repeating units of this thing and you're looking at it going oh my gosh where do i even start with this well you're going to start exactly the same way as you can start with lots of things so you're going to start off with two carbons connected together and i'm going to take that double bond and i'm going to turn it into a single bond now on my left hand carbon i have two hydrogens and on my right hand carbon i have a hydrogen at the bottom and i have this incredibly ugly thing at the top doesn't actually matter what that incredibly ugly thing is we're just going to ignore it and then i'm going to draw another one of those so i've got a carbon and i've got two hydrogens on the first carbon and I've got a single bond to another carbon and i've got a hydrogen at the bottom and i've got that incredibly ugly thing at the top doesn't matter what it is all i've done is i've taken the same molecule that i was given in the question and i'm drawing it out okay two hydrogens a third hydrogen and this ugly piece of garbage okay now all i'm going to do is i'm going to take my pen and i'm going to join them together the other thing that is really important to note is that I have these bonds at the ends. These are really important because what they're showing is that this chain does not stop at this point, that it continues on and there are more things connected. And that is how, no matter how ugly your molecule is, you're going to keep drawing. Now the other important thing to note about polymers is that they have a lot of important uses. And those uses are related to the properties of the polymers and they make them often a lot more times useful than the monomers that they came from so most polymers because of the size of the molecule because we've got thousands if not millions of monomers connected together they will be solid at room temperature because of their large molar mass they often form um, either fibers or they form plastic sheets or extruded shapes so these are plastics and our fibers and our man-made products so think anything from polypropylene underwear and thermal wear through to plastic bottles and things like that okay they are usually durable um, one of the reasons we use them is that they don't break down in the presence of sunlight they don't break down in the presence of water they um, they have a long life they're resistant to stuff um, they're really useful so think plastics in general right the clothing that you're wearing the plastic bottles that you're using the pens the plastics that make up your computer all of that stuff comes from these types of polymers and these properties are much more useful than the individual monomers okay most monomers tend to be gases at room temperature they tend to be gases or at the worst liquids and they're not useful for a lot of things so by turning it into a polymer through this polymerization process we turn it from being something that is maybe easy to come by but not particularly useful to something that has a myriad of uses which is why people want to make polymers okay so that's it for today and tomorrow i will be starting to look at concepts of isomerism